After having the Sony ZV-E1 for over a year now and making lots of videos comparing it to other cameras, I realize I have not done an official review for this camera yet. So today, as someone who has been a big fan of the Sony ZV-E1, I'm going to tell you why even though it's a really incredible camera, you probably shouldn't buy it. Look. That pains me to say. If you know me or watch either of my channels, you'll know that I'm all about value. And this camera is the king of value. It offers so much for the price, it's crazy. But therein lies the problem. It's a monster truck engine in a Honda Civic body. It's too powerful for its own good. And at the end of the day, when you're buying a tool to help you get a job done, reliability is key. This camera is compact, yet has a full frame sensor, offers 4K 60fps without a crop, has dynamic active stabilization which is incredible, has amazing autofocus, has a flippy screen, auto framing, product showcase mode, multiple face recognition, has 10 bit with S-Log3 and many other color spaces. You can add custom LUTs, it has a touch screen, it has great battery, you can stream with it, I mean what a list of features. And I thought that feature list would outweigh any of the downsides of this camera, and you know what? I was wrong. The camera overheats and that is a deal breaker for me now. When I bought this camera I had created lots of videos on my channels so I knew how I was going to use it. I usually record my talking head segments which are anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes and a take. Then I shoot lots of b-roll footage which is in shorter bursts. I really felt like the overheating wouldn't be an issue and honestly for 95% of my shooting it's not. But let me tell you, for that 5% of the time where it is an issue, it's a huge issue. To stop everything you're doing and having to wait for a camera to cool down, it's just, it's the worst thing in the world. It's brutal. And when you are doing this stuff, especially at the level where you're getting paid and time is money, no amount of saving money is worth that feeling or that halt in your production. Honestly too, that's really my only knock against this camera. I understand it's not going to have FX quality features, it's not an FX camera. But you're not paying FX prices either, right? You're paying half that and getting a taste of most of those features. So what do I recommend then? Well, that's a good question. And right now, that's a difficult question to answer. Because most affordable cameras out there are still hybrids. They offer a lot of features someone like me doesn't really care about or want to pay for like viewfinders. And the best video cameras Sony has offered in the non-professional full frame space are the a7S 3 and the FX3. And not only are they still very pricey, the a7S 3 came out in 2018. Oh, I mean that's a testament of how good it is. but. Who would want to buy that thing right now for full price? I don't. The FX3 came out in 2021, but the price, oh. I mean, that really seems like the camera for me, but it's so far beyond what I'm willing to spend. I mean, that's why I bought the ZV-E1. My real problem is I fell in love with shooting in 4K60. The ZV-E1 is not as bad when you're shooting at 24 or even 30 frames per second, but if you're shooting at 60 frames per second and you take 5 to 10 minutes setting up your shot with the camera on or playing around in the menus, it's already on its way to overheating. You're just making the window of actually shooting shrink, so you gotta plan for that. And I hate that. I hate being on a clock. I love the freedom of just clicking record and taking your time to make good content. Look, I still love this camera. No camera out there I have seen at this price point even comes close to this camera. An affordable video focused full frame camera packed to the brim with features designed around content creation. Sony is so close with this thing. Oh and yes, I know you can buy fans for it. I did and it was helpful, but it was just another thing to charge and worry about. I already have enough stuff to charge. I didn't want another thing. So while I can't think of any alternatives to this camera to buy at the moment, maybe besides going down to crop sensor, it's just impossible for me to recommend this camera anymore because sometimes you record for longer than you expect and no amount of quality or features will ever outweigh the stress of having your camera overheat on you when you're in the middle of shooting. If you really adjust how you shoot either by changing the frame rate or the resolution, sure it's a solid camera but you will be limited to making shorter clips for as long as you have it. I don't plan on selling mine anytime soon. I love my Sony 24mm f1.4 lens and it still works great on this body. But if the opportunity ever comes up where I can get a steal of a deal on an FX3 or something, I will.
If you have this camera or are planning on buying one, look, if you don't shoot in 4K60, it's mostly fine. It'll still overheat on you, but it might take 30 plus minutes. And if you can get all your work done in that time, you'll love it or be super happy with the quality. But if you're buying this camera to last you three, five, maybe the next 10 years, or you want it to be a tool to help you grow your video production business, I'd recommend either save up for one of the other Sony cameras or wait to see what happens with this ZV-E1 II or whatever they call it. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you have this camera and have issues with it overheating? Or are you planning on buying this camera and are wondering just how bad the overheating actually is? Let me know in the comments below. The only two real times I have issues are when I shoot in 4K60 for 20 minutes and over, or when I'm using my iPad as a monitor with this camera, which I love to do. If you want to see whether or not you should maybe buy an APS-C camera instead of a full frame camera for video, check out this video I made next. Otherwise, maybe watch this one. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time on the Sad Studio. Dad!